Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Live channel. In today's video, we've got a few issues to fix on the S80. Now, um, we're getting a few funny noises. Uh, the first is from the rear left. Um, when you brake, we get a grinding noise. Now, for those who don't know, we change the pads on that. Um, so I'm just going to check that over and see what that could be. It might just be the pads bedding in because the disc was a little scored. Um, but yeah, we're going to take a look at that. And then we've also got something funny happening on the fr on the front left as well. Um, it's sort of a grinding and um, binding noise, um, which has happened since I hit quite a large puddle. So I'm guessing it's probably just bent the um, dust cover um, behind the brake disc. But nonetheless, it'll be a good opportunity to get the car jacked up, take the wheels off and have a look. So this is the, the first job of the day. As you can see, we've got a bit of scoring um, from when the brake pad failed. Um, and now every time you brake, you get a grinding noise. Got new Brembo pads, so um, I've got a theory, perhaps, that we're sticking on with the caliper. Um, so we're going to take, take the wheel off, have a look at that. And then moving on to the driver's side here. I've got a feeling it's happened before. Um, this dust cover tends to bend at the bottom and touch the wheel. Oh, the, the brake. Ah, there you go. <laughs> you can see it there. Um, it's actually touching the disc, which causes an awful noise. Um, but actually, it's fairly simple to fix. You just need to prise it back. Um, Mrs. DL, like I said in the last video, has been on the side in your rally stage with the car. Um, I let her borrow it and it comes out like this. But <laughs> she's insisted she will clean it with me later. So um, we'll let her off. So yeah, we'll start with the rear um, because I don't know what that issue is. Um, and then move on to the front. So if I can't fix the rear, at least I've had a good day. And I managed to fix the front. So uh, yeah, let's get the car jacked up and the wheel off. Okay, so we've just got a 19 mil socket on the end of our breaker bar here. We're just gonna break off these nuts while the car's on the ground. I finally the locking wheel nut and I absolutely hate locking wheel nuts. Um, they're just a nightmare. They never seem to fit properly. Like that. Um, and they're just oh, no one's gonna steal that wheel, are they? Um I guarantee that when I take them off, or if I take them off, they're um just not. There we go. All right. Yeah. Now we've got the wheels, the wheel nuts broken off. Let's get our jack underneath. Now you might see a modification here. Um, just a nice soft pad, save you using a rag. Um, we're going to look for the pinch weld underneath the car. You know what, I'm going to show you. Okay, so what we're looking for is this piece here where you've got a gap in the cladding and you can see the pinch weld there. There we go, just like that. Just make sure it's nicely on there. That's good, my jack's got a, uh, a little concave bit for this, so it's nice and safely on there. You just want to make sure the car's in park and you've chopped the front wheels before you do this as well. Otherwise you might find it rolls off. And I've left the handbrake on. There we go, so there's definitely some grinding going on there. And if you guys can see that or hear that, definitely some grinding. Um, I've got a sneaking suspicion it might be the caliper pins. Yeah, there's definitely some rubbing there as well. Um, might even bleed the brakes to see if that um, could be a cause. Let's get this wheel off. There's one. Stick 
These are my toolbox, I don't lose them. Where's the locking wheel nut? This is why they're ridiculous, I do. Oh, look at it. It's just bad quality as well, that's the problem. Um, oh well. And it doesn't fit in. Oh, it's just a specific pattern. Oh. Shoot thing. Right, wheel off, wheel screwed on. Of course, I'll do some prizing. Okay, so I had this wheel off not long ago, but already it's seized. Probably done less than a thousand miles. Um, so, find just getting a good bit of purchase on that bracket there. You can prize it quite effectively. Try and break the corrosion. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay then, so, um, wheel is off, and let's take a look at this caliper. I've just chucked a jack stand down as well. Um, doesn't look like it's retracting properly, especially here. I don't know if you can see, these pins aren't, probably need greasing. Because um, it's just not separating. You can see piston in the back there pad is touching the disc ever so slightly same on this one here so I think yeah we need to get the to, the thing to play ball I'm wondering if I've got some trapped air in the line could try bleeding it and seeing if that helps um, But yeah, let's let's have a bit of a pry on it and see what we can do. See if we can separate it and uh, get it working properly. Okay, so obviously I changed the brake pads here. Um, I'm just making sure they're in the right position, really. Um, brake pad, rear brake pad looks about right um, in comparison to the front. Carriers are all good. Um, disc itself, it looks worse than it is actually. Um, there is very you can't really feel it at all um so that's yeah weird um looks like the brake is dragging slightly on the bottom there um so yeah i'm gonna try prizing this for example this um is what i'm thinking is the front issue is that one of these is bent up and is rubbing on the disc so we'll check that in a minute but um yeah i'm just there's definitely some sort of binding going on um whether it's the caliper not releasing properly or whatever um yeah here you can see this bloody corrosion there it's brutal um i'm gonna have to get that sorted um to be honest i think it's time to have the reels refurbished isn't it but um we haven't all got loads of money to spend at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to check, well let's check the quality of the pins together. Um, they don't look that well greased, do they? Um, these gaiters just sort of pull off, you just got to make sure you put them back on properly. Um, that one. Let's check this bottom one. Difficult. 
difficult to see, but it doesn't look the best. Okay. Let's get a screwdriver out. Hello, Trouble. Hey, Look who's here, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Okay, now Mrs. DL's here, we're going to bleed the brakes. We're just going to release the nipple here. What size is it? I can't, I can never remember what size this is. I'm going to try to. Not yet. 11 mil. <laughs> She's raring to go. She loves this because uh, I get brake fluid all over me. Let's get this bad boy on. Have it on loosen. Just crack it off ever so slightly. No. Hold on. Not yet because I've managed to wedge the socket on. Okay, right, give it a gentle squeeze. Okay, that'll do. Okay, okay, I'll just have another gentle squeeze, please. Hold the pressure on. That's very gentle. Perfect, thank you. Your assistance is very much appreciated. Now just give us a squeeze again. Cool, that's not leaking anymore. Push it down to the bottom? Yeah, just push it. Fab, we've got no leakage there, which is good. Okay, so what I've done is I've managed to get some space between the pad and the disc now. Um, I, what I did is I released the bleed nipple and then used a screwdriver to prise them across, I think, to be honest. It's just these pins need greasing, so um, I'm going to whip those off now. Um, or whip them out a little bit. I don't want to take the whole caliper off because it's a nightmare trying to get back on. Um, and then grease it up, put it back together, and hopefully that will be that. All we need is a 16mm spanner to hold the nut on this side and a 13mm to start um, on this side. That should give us a bit of movement. Made any difference, but what it does mean is that we can do this now and spread the grease around um, once Mrs. DL brings it. We'll send you off into the garage to find it. Okay, so we have grease. I'm just it's a dirty job. Grease and brake dust is just a nightmare. I'm not using any particular special grease. People say that you should use a specific type of grease. This is just a proof of concept to see if. Um, our issue is in fact the fact that the pins aren't greased and now everything's very slippery it's quite difficult to get to <laughs> so what I'm going to do I'm going to chuck this gator back on and uh, yeah perhaps this isn't suitable for YouTube <laughs> what we're doing here <laughs> There's no sort of, this is, uh, yeah. Good morning. Hi, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that is moving much better. I don't know if you guys can see that. Sorry for the slightly X-rated approach, but um, it needs mass sometimes. Man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. So let's get this tightened back up and repeat the process on the bottom one. And oh, if that fixes it, I'll be over the moon. Tighten that. That's one done. Let's do the bottom one, which is hopefully as easy. And um, 
You know what, chaps, we might even be done before breakfast. What is the time? It's gone nine o'clock. So I think it's looking good for breakfast. We've just got the uh, front wheel to do. Um, Miss Dell is up in the, doing some tiling in the van. So can you see here how poor the movement is? And I can feel it, it's very grindy. I'm gonna peel back the gate here. We've just gotta be very careful we don't tear it. Um, oh, that was close, I nearly did tear it. Okay, perhaps a screwdriver isn't the best tool. Uh, just trying to get this on. It's probably welded on because of the brake fluid that's leaked on it. There we go. Like so. Get some grease on my finger. I'm doing off camera. See if we can peel this back enough for me to get my finger in and spread some lube. There's some. Get a little bit more. I've got greasy fingers now and I've got nothing to wipe them on. We're told I'm not allowed to wipe them on my trousers. Uh, let's just work this grease in. Give it a spin. Oh, I don't know if you can see, but that is. Much better. the neighbours. Okay, let's get this pin back in then. Start it off by hand just to make sure it's properly seated. Boom. Let's roll team. Let's get this. I'm trying to get it on the wrong bit, that's why. It is running a bit rich, isn't it? See, this is why I love Mrs. DL. What did you just tell me? Oh. <laughs> Go on, tell I the people. That the Echo Sport that lives next door was running a bit rich. <laughs> so you can tell how an engine is running by the smell. Yeah. She's a keeper, boys. She's a keeper. Well, that's all those years of London classic car show I have to endure. So it's <laughs> up my nostril. You know that smell from anywhere, don't you? <laughs> okay, so... Um, that's all greased up. We're looking good. We are looking good, boys. There's a gap there. That's looking good. Oh, let's get the wheel back on and take it for a drive. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to go and do that front wheel there, and then we're going to go for breakfast. <laughs> and then I'm going to right drive it later, so I'll let you know how it gets on. Before we chuck the wheel back on, I just like to go over all my bolts that I've loosened and uh, just make sure they're tight enough. Um, so I've rechecked that. Obviously, this is brakes, so you want to make sure it's all working properly. So I always double check that I've tightened the bleed nipple. As soon as you brake, and if you haven't tightened the bleed nipple, you're just going to get fluid come out. No braking force on this wheel. Um, it's going to upset the balance of the car. Just a load of rubbish, really. You don't want. So um, now I'm going to chip off this horrible corrosion. Um, get some anti seize on there, and hopefully that'll <laughs> make things easier. To get the wheel off next time which hopefully you won't have to do for a while but you never know this is uh it's got 120,000 miles you know so it's 
only just run in. This is when a few issues start to, a few teething issues <laughs> start to raise their heads, but uh, otherwise, we're all looking pretty good under here. This is our, this was our advisory um, on the MOT that this is um, funky. Getting that off is going to be interesting, isn't it? Um, might have to start soaking that in uh, WD-40 uh, over a period of a couple of months by the looks of that. Um, same with this one, but uh, just got to do these both sides. Nice and easy to get to, uh, as we've got the wheel off here, so I'll um, I'll make a video on that, show you guys how to do it. No point paying someone 150 quid when you can do it yourself for 25. So, uh, yeah, let's get this horrible crap off here, um, get this face lubricated, get the wheel sorted out. Um, problem is I haven't got a... I need to get some new centre caps for my wheels, don't I? Um, that'll be that sorted then. Stop all this rubbish getting in, wrecking it. So uh, <laughs> let's get that sorted. Now, I don't have any proper tools for this. Um, ideally, you'd use a drill with a wire wheel, um, but I'm going to use a screwdriver to just... and probably my jack handle there. Just apply a bit of positive pressure and break this off. Look at it, it's just awful. It's gone in my eye. It's gone in your eye. <laughs> there we go, that's how it should look. Nice and clean, well, there should even be a gap between there, but uh, I think it might be time for a new disc anyway soon, um, but not today, different job. Let's just get some grease on there. All this is going to do is just create a seal, stop it seizing so much really, nothing. Particularly, you can use anti seize as well, which is designed specifically to do what this does. Um, it just lasts longer, basically. Oh, it's the Nebra and then Master Bongo. Good vehicles, then. Worth a few, a few quid now as well. And then I'm just going to grease. I'll spray some grease in here as well because they're exceptionally corroded. And it's not going to make it come undone uh, because we're going to properly torque them. It's just going to again provide that little bit of notice I've we'll put it around the edge um, just to give it that barrier um, to stop water getting in there in the first place because that shouldn't really happen should it um great <laughs> but anyway, we've, yeah we've made this surface nice and uh, lubricated look out what you up to? just uh play with some lube nearly done <laughs> nearly done what are you doing Look out. Oh, no, building drawer building runners. It's an absolute day of action here. At, uh, the oh. DL. The day of action here, isn't it? At DLHQ. Because um, it's the DL Autumn Mansion. Internationals. DL Mansion. DL Towers. Drive Life Towers. Um, <laughs> because we've got a load of jobs we want to do. I got up at I got up at 8 and walked the dog and cracked on. Um, because we need to get the car sorted, I've got to mow the lawn, etc. We've got a shortened day because we've got the Autumn Internationals later um, in the rugby. So um, I'm into that. I want to watch that. Mrs. DL loves it as well. Um, and it's a lo basically five rugby matches in a row um, on Amazon Prime. So um got to be done. So we've got to get all this stuff sorted um, before we can uh, get going. But what time are we on? 9.54. We've got time. Right, wheel back on. Now I hate putting wheels on. I just, ugh, it's just stupid. The Jeep has lug nuts and that is far easier to work with. You just basically chuck it on and it goes on. Whereas this, you've got to 
perform some sort of balancing act, trying to get the wheel to sit on this tiny little lip while you try and get a bolt in. So, um, wish me luck. I tend to like to get my foot underneath, use that to moderate the height. Oh, and then you've got to remember to line up the holes as well. Darling? 142 divided by 3. Hold on a second. <laughs> Does that even go? No, because 43 is 120. No, it's going to be about... 47 remainder 1. Sorry, not an easy answer. Yeah, seven and a third. 47 and a third. There we go. It only took three and a half minutes. There we go. Let's get these for the wheel straight. Do you want to do them all? We'll do them up completely because we need to get the others in. We're just going to, one by one, add the wheels up. Notice how I've left the locking wheel not last, because I hate the thing. Okay, wheel is on, it's all legit, we're going to drop the car down, torque it up to spec, and then we are done. Oh, but how much better is that now spinning? There's still a slight noise, which you'd expect from a bit of brake drag, but, oh yes, that's better, isn't it? That is far better, hopefully it'll stay like that. Um, jack handle. Oh, let's move the jack stand. Jack stand removed. Just gently. Car will sit back down. Wonderful job. How's my tape held up? Not too bad, not too bad. Not perfect, but not too bad. Right, let's tilt these bad boys up. Torque wrench, 140 newton meters, for those that don't know. Um, so let's do that now. That's three. Boom. Done. Job completed. So, <laughs> let's quickly, uh, I'm probably not even going to bother jacking it up, to be honest. I can see what the issue is. Um, this cover here is rubbing on the disc. I suppose jacking up would be easier, I just can't really be bothered now. Um, no, I'll prize it off. I'll prize it back without without jacking it up and taking the wheel off. Um, 
safer that way, I suppose. Less risk, that's how I'm going to justify it to myself. And I want breakfast now. I've got sausage and eggs waiting in the house. So um, let's get that sorted quickly. Okay, I've only got a good screwdriver to be honest. Just a basic one. Yeah, you can see it. Not in the position it should be. Ah. <laughs> uh, Hundred and twenty thousand miles of corrosion on the uh, dust cover. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was a big chunk, but it's actually my bit coming out. Oh no, I've lent, I've knelt on the, on the dirt. I made my favourite jeans dirty. The Carhartt jeans are the way to go. They're just fantastic. They're what Levi's used to be. Um, I wonder if that could have been a noise actually, all of that rubbish. My bloody bits come out again. All that rubbish. Um it built up. Let's bring that back. And was rubbing. It's never good when your rubbish rubs. That's not a healthy sounding Citroen Bulingo. There we go. And that explains the slightly rusty looking deposits here. I think there's probably something stuck in the back of that, or probably all of this rubbish um, that's caused that to make a rubbing noise. Um, you see you've got metallic shavings there as well. So. There were plenty of life left on the brake pads, so I'm confident it's not that. So I think, you know what, chaps, I think we've sorted it. I'm just going to work out how to get my bit <laughs> from inside the wheel there. But um, I'm going to end the video there. I'm going to go in and get some breakfast. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.